Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time, God is good. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this hour. We're asking, O oh Lord, that you so bless your people. Turn us around that the power of prayer and praise be found in every life and through every life in Jesus' name. We're asking, Lord, that every mountain will move away. Every challenge will get away. And all those afflictions and sicknesses and problems, Lord, I pray this day they will clear away in Jesus' name. Once again, Lord, we are coming before your word. The bread of life. Feed us, Lord. Make us strong as you feed us with this balanced spiritual diet in Jesus' name. We we'll pray, Lord, it will be for us, our brothers and sisters, members of our families, everyone, Lord, close to us, will be a partaker of the goodness of the Lord. We we'll thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody said, yeah. Amen. Thank you very much. You can sit down. We come to a subject that many people think they know much about. And as you look at the Bible afresh again, you wonder whether we really know what we think we know. We're talking about prayer and praise. And as we look at the subject, you might say, that's a familiar territory. That's something we know very well already. That when you pray, when you praise the Lord, that great, great things happen. But as you open your eyes and see, and open your heart to think about and meditate on what we read together, you'll be able to tell that you need to have some addition of knowledge in your own life, spiritual life, concerning the power of prayer and praise. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16. I'm reading there from verse 22. Acts, chapter 16, verse 22. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrate drenched up their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison and charging the jailer to keep them safely, who have been received such a charge thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. As you look at those verses, you see, the things that happened to Paul and Silas at Philippi. They had done something good. They had lifted up a fallen lady. They had cast out, Paul in particular, had cast out the evil spirit, the spirit of divination from this damsel at Philippi. And the parents of that lady, the beneficiaries of the evil that she was doing, they were angry. And then they came against Paul and Silas. In verse 22, a multitude rose up against them. It was in the midst of that they prayed and sang praises. And then it says the magistrates in the plural, they rent up their clothes and they commanded them to be beaten. It was in the midst of that, after being beaten like that mercilessly, that's when they prayed and sang praises to the Lord. 
And when they had laid all that on them, they then cast them into the prison. And it was in the midnight of their pain, the midnight of their persecution, and the midnight of their suffering, that they prayed and sang praises unto the Lord. In fact, their feet were fast in the stocks. That's when they prayed and sang praises unto the Lord. Anybody can praise the Lord. After victory has been won. Anybody can shout the praise of the Lord. When the job has come. When the healing has taken place. When deliverance has taken place. And when everybody is smiling at you. When everybody seems to be happy with you. When they're sending gifts unto you. When they're saying well done. We love you. We appreciate you. And you're one of the best gifts in the body of Christ. Anybody can seek. Anybody can praise the Lord at such a time. But to sing. But to praise the Lord. But to glorify the Lord excitedly. With enthusiasm. When your feet are in the stalks. And when you're going through the pain. That is the better thing to do. Praising God after victory at the Red Sea. That's good. That's good. But then praising God before the Jericho walls fall down. That's better. That although the Jericho walls are still there, the problems are still there, and the challenges are still there, and it appears you're wondering, when will the walls collapse? And in the midst of that, you are able to praise the name of the Lord. And you say, none of these things move me. I'll praise the Lord anyhow. I'll worship the Lord anyhow. I'll sing praises to the Lord anyhow. That is better. Let's look at Exodus chapter 14 and learn some wisdom. Exodus chapter 14 verse 10. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold the Egyptians marched after them and they were so afraid and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord and they said unto Moses because there were no graves in Egypt as thou taking us away to die in the wilderness wherefore as thou done dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt. Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. You see that attitude? When the problems came, murmuring, grumbling, complaining they couldn't praise the lord they forgot all the great spectacular miracles in egypt and they forgot the night when all those firstborn died in egypt all they could see now was a problem and you can see them grumbling murmuring they couldn't praise the lord at this time and in verse 13 and moses said unto the people fear ye not Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Guru even say amen. I mean, these uh, Israelites, you know, they were so, they were so taken up on their problem that all that Moses said, saying don't worry about this there is nothing to worry about nothing to fret about nothing to be so panicky about and he said all the egyptians you see today you will see them no more and they were so much into their problems and hallelujah was absent from their mouth amen was absent from them and joy was absent from their heart 
the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Looks like you are different from them. Before your Jericho walls fall, you will shout the praise of the Lord. And before the pain goes, you will praise the Lord. Before the sickness is healed, you will praise the Lord. Before the challenges are over, you will praise the Lord in Jesus' name. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me? And then it says, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. We're going to go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the angel of the Lord, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, that is, to the Israelites, so that the one came not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. A miracle took place. A miracle is going to take place in your life. And when that miracle takes place in your life, you'll shout for joy. Of course, you're going to start shouting before the miracle takes place. You're going to start praising the Lord before the healing takes place. You're going to start praising the Lord before the mountain moves away. You're going to start praising the Lord before the pregnancy, before the miracle child comes. And you'll praise the Lord into the miracle. And then after the miracle, you'll keep on praising the Lord in Jesus' name. Verse 22, and the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left and the Egyptian pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea even all of Pharaoh's horses and his chariots and his horsemen and it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillars of fire and of the cloud and he troubled the host of the Egyptians it will trouble your enemy <clears throat> it will trouble your detractors it will trouble your persecutors because your enemies make themselves the enemies of God and because they make themselves the enemies of God trouble and tribulation will come upon them <clears throat> and then it says in verse 25 and he took off their chariots, the chariot wheels, that they drape them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel. The time is coming. The time has come already. I said the time has come already. When your enemies will say, let us flee. Let us run away. You will not run, they will run. You will not flee, they will flee. They said, let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fighted for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea. And the sea returned to its strength. When the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, they will be overthrown. 
this very day they are going to be overthrown in Jesus name and then it says and the waters returned and he covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them they remained not so much as one of them but the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left does the Lord save Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore but such a one and Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses a miracle had taken place a great deliverance had come look at chapter 15 verse 1 then sang Moses and the children of Israel they sung unto the Lord and spake saying I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horse and his rider as he's thrown into the sea that's what I'm saying well it's good to praise the Lord eventually they started murmuring grumbling complaining fearful agitated when the problem was there now that the problem was solved and now they saw that God is able able to deliver able to set free now that they saw and they said seeing is believing but the people that are on the better side they said believing is seeing believe it first rejoice first Praise the Lord for us. But you know these people, they had to wait to see before they could believe. And now when the miracle took place, what joy, what excitement, what praise, and what adoration they gave unto the Lord. They said, in verse 2, the Lord is my strength. Ah, you should have known that before. My strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. He is my God. And I will prepare him an habitation, my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name, Pharaoh's chariots and his host, as he cast into the sea. And his chosen captives also are drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed in pieces the enemy, and in the greatness of thine excellency, thou hast overthrown them that throws up against thee. Thou sentest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as trouble. They were still praising the Lord because a miracle had taken place. Because the Red Sea was parted and because a great deliverance had been given unto them. What I'm saying is, it's wonderful to praise the Lord when you've got the victory. When you've got the miracle. And when the power of God has been unleashed against the enemy. And now you are delivered and you have dominion. Praising the Lord is wonderful at such a time. But, did you praise the Lord before the problem went? Before you saw the miracle, before you got the healing, before you got the answer to the prayer, don't be like these children of Israel, always learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Then they said in verse 9, the enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My law shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them thou didst blow with thy wind the sea covered them the sank as led in the mighty waters who is like unto thee O Lord among the gods who is like thee glorious in holiness fearful in praises doing what I said doing what doing wonders they rejoice and they praise the Lord. I want you to look now at verse 23. 
And when they came to Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. And the people, what's the next word? <laughs> tell me. I said, tell me. Say that out loud. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Look at this. They just finished singing, praising the Lord. Glorifying the Lord. Then the problem arose. The very next minute. And it started the old business again. Murmuring. Complaining. What are we going to drink? Look at our condition. They never learned. Praise the Lord before the Jericho walls fall. Shout. Unto the Lord before the problems are solved. Babies all the time whining, pining, crying all the time. Joshua chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 20 there. Joshua chapter 6. Praise him before the problems are solved. Glorify him before the sickness is healed. Rejoice. Again I say unto you, rejoice. While the walls are still up and standing. Sing unto the Lord. While the pain, the pressure is still there. That is the glorious life of a true believer. Joshua chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 20. So the people shouted. When the priest blew with the trumpet and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet that the people shouted with a great shout what happened i said what happened that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city every man straight before him and he took the city i'm talking to you on the power glorious power of prayer and praise praying the right kind of prayer and praising the lord at the right time before he does anything at all while the challenges are there while the difficulties are there praising the lord all the same the power of prayer and praise three points we're going to look at number one proper perception of praising god the proper perception of praising god number two precious promises for pleasing god precious promises for pleasing god number three prevailing power for promoting god's glory that's how the power will come that prevails over your sickness, over your mountain, over the challenges in your life. Prevailing power while you promote the glory of God. Number one. What's number one? I said what's number one? Proper perception of praising God. Psalm 29. Psalm 29 verse 1 verse 2. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. In the morning, glory is due unto his name. In the night, glory is due unto his name. Before you get healed, glory is due unto his name. After you are healed, glory is due unto his name. While you are happy emotionally, glory is due unto his name. While you are sad, sorrowful, glory is due unto his name. Your condition does not change the glory that is due 
unto the name of the Lord. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord. How? I said how? In the beauty of holiness. When you are happy, when you are not happy, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Holiness is beautiful. We're looking at Psalm 35, verse 28. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. My tongue shall speak of the righteousness of the Lord. The Lord is righteous all the time. When the pharaohs are after you, the Lord is still righteous. When Pharaoh is a kind of galloping and running after you, wanting to swallow you up, the Lord is still righteous. And therefore you say, my tongue is going to speak of the righteousness of the Lord and of his praise all the day long. While the Red Sea is before you, and Pharaoh and his channels are behind you, and the mountains head you around while you are in that tight corner, while you are at the crossroad, and you don't know what you will do. The Lord is still righteous. And then all the day long, you should not grumble or you should not complain, you should not murmur. You'll be praising the Lord and speaking of his righteousness and of his praise all day long. Isaiah chapter 61. The proper perception of praising God, not when you are happy, not when everything is going your way, not everything is turning up this way that you want, that you envisage. All the day, all the time, morning, noon, and night, even at midnight. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 11. For as the earth bringeth forth a board, and as the garden, Cause such the things that are sown in it to spring forth. So the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise. Righteousness and praise. And do you know some people that are not even born again? Do you know some people, all they do, and they say, We're going to rejoice, we're going to praise the Lord. And you can see, you know, their lives, you can see through their lives, no righteousness. No holiness, no purity, and there is no standing in the righteous word of the Lord. Their lives are all sinful, their lives are all evil, their lives are all wicked. And then they bring all their drums out, and they bring all their guitars out, and all the instruments of music out. They say, We're going to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord without righteousness. God does not accept that. And God does not see that that is praise. It says in this verse 11, it will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations, all the nations of the earth. It will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth. When you have the right perception of that demand of the Lord, that expectation of the Lord, you will know that he is not, he's not interested in all that flattery. Before I became born again, uh, I knew somebody in the, you know, the church I went to. I don't mean the church that taught me being born again. I mean the church where they didn't even talk about being born again at all. And then this fellow will come in our local language. And then he begins to praise God and call God by this name and this name and that name and that name. Until you, your head will swell. Your head might swell, but the head of God does not swell because of a sinner, an adulterer, a fornicator, a thief, a person that doesn't know God at all, calling all those names. And sometimes you find people that do that. And they think that he's praising God. If there's going to be any acceptable praise unto the Lord, righteousness and praise all the day long look at psalm 78 psalm 78 i'm reading from verse 35 and they remembered that god was their rock and the high god of their redeemer 
Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth. All that is flattery. If there's no obedience to the word of the Lord, if there's no appreciation of his righteous deeds, if there is no appreciation of his righteous nature and the virtue of righteousness and holiness, the rest is empty flattery, shallow flattery. And it says, nevertheless, did he flatter him with their mouth? They lied unto him with their tongues, for their heart was not right with him. Neither were they steadfast in his covenant. When you see people like that who are praising God, the first thing you want to look at is, are they born again? Do they appreciate the righteousness of God that comes from Calvary? coming through Christ and coming into our heart, it is in that stage of righteousness and holiness and purity and sanctification that you come and you praise the Lord and the praises of the Lord are flowing from a sanctified heart, a righteous heart. That is the acceptable praise unto the Lord. We're looking at Isaiah again. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13, so that you will know and have a proper perception of praising the Lord. And when you have that proper perception of praising the Lord, then the praise will bring the prevailing power of God down in our midst when the praise of the Lord flow out unhindered from a heart that is cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, a heart that is made righteous, a heart that is purified, a heart that appreciates the righteousness of the Lord. When the praise is flowing out, what great, great power, irresistible power is manifested. In Isaiah chapter 29, reading from verse 13, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near me with their mouths, and with their lips do honor me, praising me, glorifying me, honoring me with their lips. But I've removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precepts of men. They look up to men more than to the message of the world. They look up to men more than to the ministers of the world. And the Lord said, I'm not interested in that kind of praise, that kind of flattery, that kind of shallow praise, that kind of empty praise. It says, the praise of me, the worship of me, the glorifying me, they are honoring me, is taught by the precepts of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among these people, even a marvelous work. And a wonder for the wisdom of the wise men shall perish, and the understanding of the prudent men shall be hid. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their words are in the dark, and they say, Who seeth us, and who knoweth us? You know what the Lord is saying? The Lord is saying, If you want to praise me, be sincere. If you want to praise me, be forthright. If you want to praise me, be truthful. If you want to praise me, get into my world and see my virtue and see my attribute of righteousness, of faithfulness, of holiness, and praise me on the basis of that. Even we who are human beings, even we creatures of the Almighty God, when somebody is praising us, we first of all get interested, we get excited. He appreciates me, he loves me, he praises me, he honors me. Then when you discover, hey, the man is only putting you on an empty house, just flattering you, he doesn't mean it. And you can see the grinning, the smiling, and then he says, you think I really praise you, appreciate you? I'm just, uh, you know, pushing you forward. That's to push you down. You're not interested in that kind of praise. Shallow. Empty. Insincere. 
hypocritical. You don't want that kind of praise. How about the Almighty God? Almighty God wants a sincere praise of his attribute. His attribute of righteousness and holiness and purity. His attribute of faithfulness and right from the depths of your heart. You say, Lord, I'm praising you. Lord, I'm glorifying you because of your righteous acts. In Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 31. And he come unto thee as the people cometh. And they seek before thee as my people. And they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love. With their mouth they show much love, much honor, much appreciation. They can string together all these wonderful names of God and make the mind and the heads of men and women to swell. What they say, they are praising the Lord. And the Lord said, there's nothing to it. It's shallow. It's superficial, it's empty, it's all flattery. And then it says, But their heart goes after their covetousness. But we're going to praise God sincerely today. I said, We're going to praise God sincerely today. You're learning that praising the Lord is not because he buttered your bread and he sugared your tea. It's you're not praising the Lord because see what he has done. See what he has done. And then when a problem arises, you begin the grumbling, the murmuring again. When the word comes, the word of his righteousness and the word of his holiness, then you, you know, you shrink back and say, no, I wasn't expecting that. Why were you not expecting that? God is holy. God is righteous and he wants you to appreciate and to praise and to honor and to lift up the word of his righteousness and praise. We're looking at 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 9. But you're a chosen generation. I pray you'll be part of the chosen generation. Many are called, but few are chosen. But thank God I am chosen. I say thank God I am chosen. When you repent of your sin. When you call on the name of the Lord and when you believe on the death of the Lord Jesus on the cross of Calvary for you and you put your faith, your trust in the Lord, he died for me. He died to take my sins away and you believe that with all your heart, then you become part of that chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth what? The praises of him was called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You remain in that light, the light of a holy life, the light of a purified life, the light of a truthful life, the light of a sincere life. You remain in that. And it is when you remain in that that you realize has called us out of darkness out of the darkness of sinning darkness of evil darkness of wickedness and it's called us into the glorious light of the gospel and you maintain that light walking in the light living in the light it is only then the praise is acceptable unto the lord which in time past were naughty people but now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly laws which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evil doers, they may by your good works which they shall behold the what? The what? Glorify God in the day of visitation. That's how to make the praises of the Lord sound forth and sound out. When people can praise the name of the Lord because of your life, because of the righteousness, because of the holiness, because of the purity, you love it and you live in it. 
Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16. I'm reading verse 25, verse 26. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. And at midnight, midnight of suffering, and at midnight, midnight of sorrow, and at midnight, the midnight of persecution, and at midnight, the midnight of imprisonment, and at midnight, the midnight of all that beating, and at midnight, the midnight of bleeding, with all the lashes on their backs, with all the pain in their body, and with all the darkness all around. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. That's why we say the new covenant is much better than the old covenant. In the old covenant, if they were beaten like that, in the old covenant, if they were imprisoned like that, in the old covenant, if they suffered like that, they'd be grumbling, they'll be complaining, and they'll be murmuring. In the new covenant, when you have experienced the salvation of the new covenant, when you have experienced the sanctification of the new covenant, when the lashes come, when the persecution comes, and when the pressure comes, you praise the name of the Lord. And God responds to that. Look at verse 26. And suddenly, your problems are going to depart suddenly. Your sickness will be healed suddenly. And all this pressure coming from the enemy will go away suddenly. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaking. And immediately, everybody say immediately. You know, if you have the right attitude towards the Lord, right disposition towards the Lord, that even though the rebuke and the reproach of the heathen is there, and you say, I'm still going to praise the Lord anyhow. The pain is there. I'm still going to praise the Lord anyhow. The persecution is there. I'm going to praise the Lord anyhow. The cloud is coming down. The night is very thick with darkness. I'm going to praise the Lord anyhow. I cannot see my way out of this situation. I'm at a crossroad. I'm going to praise the Lord anyhow. That's when the miracle happens. Before the healing comes, praising the Lord. Before the challenges are taken away, praising the Lord. Before the burdens are removed, praising the Lord. And before the problems are solved, praising the Lord. And before the persecution subsides, praising the Lord. Then it says immediately, all the doors were opened and everyone's binds were loosed. The time has come. I said the time has come. The power for your hour. That's how it comes. Point number two. Precious promises for pleasing God. The people that please God are the people that praise Him. And He praise His righteousness at all times, in all seasons. And when you do that and you praise the Lord, look at the precious promises for pleasing God. Psalm 69. Psalm 69. I'm reading from verse 30. Psalm 69. And we're looking at verse 30. Verse 30 here is what it says. I'll praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or bullock that has horns and hooves. It says, I will praise the Lord and praise the Lord in the right attitude, in the right disposition at the right time and it's flowing from the depth of my heart and it says this praising the lord at midnight praising the lord when the jericho walls are still there praising the lord when the pain and the persecution are still there praising the lord when the job has not come, praising the Lord. When the wife has not come, praising the Lord. When the husband has not come, praising the Lord. When the children are not yet conceived. It says, they shall please the Lord 
better than an ox or bullock that has horns and hooves. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 33. Pleasing the Lord. Praising him the right way. No hypocrisy. No flattery. No superficiality. Praising the Lord sincerely. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 6. Behold, I will bring it health and cure. Any amen still there? And I will cure them. I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. You lost your amen? And I will cause the captivity of Judah and captivity of Israel to return. And we build them as at the first. I will build them as at the first. I will build them like as the first. That's what we call the good old days. The good old days. I'm sure you have thought about that in your life when you were born again. And when the joy of the Lord was overflowing without any hindrance. And then you say, oh, the good old days when I was joyful. Good old days when I was happy. Good old days when I ran. Good old days when I walked. I was not faint. I was not weary. Good old days when I was strong. Good old days before I pray, the answer has come. Good old days while I was yet talking, the miracle is happening. Good old days I could pray all through the night. Good old days I could wait upon the Lord and fast. Good old days. The people I didn't know will be serving me. Good old days. This happened and this happened and this happened. Good old days. I didn't even pray for that. He came. I didn't pray for that. He came. I didn't pray for that. He came. Good old days. And now the Lord is saying, as at the first, as in those good old days, he will do it again. But he's going to come. Will you please the Lord? Will you praise the Lord? And there is a challenge for even pastors and ministers. You know, sometimes a pastor is looking at the congregation and is looking at the church and he's saying, Oh Lord, give us the good old days again. The good old days of exalting holiness and righteousness to the very top, to be number one. The good old days of having sincere following after the Lord. And the good old days of people having tender conscience and pure conscience and conscience that is according to the word and the will of God. Give us the good old days. And if those pastors are not careful, they'll be murmuring and grumbling privately and publicly. Oh Lord, you said you will give us the good old days and you will build us up. As at the first, what is it? It comes by praising the Lord before you see it. It comes by glorifying the Lord before you see it. It comes by not looking at the people, but looking at those things which are not seen and calling the things which be not as though they were. I'm praising the Lord for that, that it is coming. I said it is coming. I said it is coming. And it will come in Jesus' name. That's how the good old days will come back. The healing of the olden days, that's how it will come back. The miracles of the olden days, that's how it will come back. And the breakthrough of the good old days, that's how it will come back. It has come already. The sage, and I will cleanse them from all their iniquity. Whereby they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all the iniquities whereby they have sinned. And whereby they have transgressed against me. And it shall be to me a name of joy and a praise and honor before all the nations of the earth. It shall be for a praise. I said it shall be for a praise. That's how to praise the Lord. That's how to please the Lord. And when you praise the Lord like that, when the problems are still there, and you are rejoicing because you're looking at things which are not seen as if they were. I'm looking at Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah chapter 56, reading from verse 4. Precious promises. Precious promises for pleasing God. Isaiah 56, verse 4. 
For thus says the Lord unto the eunuch that keep my Sabbaths and choose the things that please me. The eunuchs, you know eunuchs, eunuchs are the people that are not complete. They do not have the ability to reproduce, the ability to be a blessing. Eunuchs, they are born, but they cannot bear. Eunuchs, they are here, but everything is empty. And they do not have enough count, enough ability. And the things that count are absent from their lives. And then it says, those eunuchs that do not have the things that count, and they're counting and counting, and we're singing, count your blessings and name them one by one, and you will see what the Lord has done. And they say, but what am I counting? I don't have anything to count. And it says, in that situation when you don't have anything to count except your losses, it says, at such a time, if those eunuchs that don't have the significant thing to count, if they will please me and praise me and take hold of my covenant, he says, that is how the blessing of the Lord will come. That's why I told you many people think they understand about prayer and praise, but they don't understand. The thing is, only when I have what counts, I have a wife and that counts. I have children and that counts. I have a job and that counts. And I have certificate and that counts. And I have all these friends who are running around me and taking care of me. And that counts a lot in the life of a man. But when I don't have whatever it is that counts in life. And then I say, what am I counting? What am I praising the Lord for? Hey, that's the time to praise the Lord. Look at verse 5. Even unto them, will I give in mine house, and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. Better things have come. I said, better things have come. When in your midnight, when in your sorrow, when in your suffering, when in your poverty and your need, you praise the name of the Lord. That's when the better things will come. For me, the better things have come. I said for me. I said for me. I said for me. I agree with you for you. I said for you. I said for you. The better things have come in Jesus' name. For all our ministers, all our pastors, all our overseers, all our group coordinators, all our coordinators, and their wives, and their children, and for everybody, all the workers, all our members, and all our invitees. Praise the Lord. I see the cloud, the cloud of blessing. The shower of blessing. Yeah. It has come. Yeah. Better things. Yeah. Better things. Yeah. Better things. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Don't be like the servant of Elijah. Elijah said, I see it. I see it. Mighty showers of blessing. Servant, go and look. He went. He came back. Master, I see nothing. How is it master can see? And a servant cannot see. Go and look again. He went, master, I said, I see nothing. You don't see anything. Why am I here? Just closing my eyes and I see. And you open your eyes, you cannot see. Go and look again. And he went. And then he came back third time. I see nothing. What's wrong with you? Why don't you see what I see? I saw it from verse 1 of 1 Kings chapter 18. And here is verse 41, verse 42. What I saw from verse 1, you cannot see in verse 41, verse 42. Go back and see again. For time, master, I can't deceive myself. 
I don't want to call the things that be not as though they were. I don't know what you see, but I see nothing. Go again. You know, it's even though that, that servant saw nothing, I still praise the Lord for that servant. If you were free time, will you go? I said, will you go? Say yes now. If I send you, and I say, your miracle is there, go and see. Check up yourself. Then you touch the place. Pastor, I see nothing. I say, check up yourself again. Second time. I see nothing. Check up yourself. Third time. Feet time, check up yourself. <laughs> what's, what's wrong with the pastor? Nothing is wrong with the pastor. What's wrong with you? Why don't you see what I see? I said the miracle is there. I said the healing is there. Yeah. I said the deliverance is there. Yeah. Me seeing anything wrong with me is the one that is not seen. And I'm saying, what's wrong with you? Check up again. And then he went the seventh time. Thank God he went the seventh time. He came back. But you know what he saw? What did he see? A little cloud. It's literally you so okay, okay, that's enough, that's enough. Go and tell Ahab there's going to be a mighty shower coming. Tell your neighbor there's a mighty shower coming. There's a mighty shower coming. There's a mighty shower coming. You will see it in Jesus' name. Don't forget what I'm saying. When it appears, you can't see anything to count. When they say you have no count. When you tell yourself you have no count, when you say, I'm just a eunuch, and I'm saying, begin to count, there is something to count. Verse 6 also, the sons of the stranger that joined themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord. To be his servants, every one that keepeth my Sabbath from polluting it. And take it hold of my covenant. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain. And make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be acceptable upon mine altar. For mine house shall be called an house of prayer unto all people. You will please the Lord. And when you please the Lord, the Lord is going to make his face to shine upon you. Point number three now, prevailing power. It has come. Prevailing power. That will prevail over every challenge of your life. As you know, you have the proper perception of praising the Lord. Proper attitude of praising the Lord. That before the Jericho walls fall, you are praising the Lord. And you praise his righteousness, his holiness, and his faithfulness. It's then that glory, that you're glorifying the Lord. It's then the great things will come. Look at Isaiah chapter 24. Isaiah chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 15. Isaiah chapter 24, verse 15. Here is the secret of having the prevailing power. Here is the secret of having the glory come down. Here is the secret of having all the miracles you ever thought about in your life. Here is the secret of bringing it down fast. Isaiah chapter 24 verse 15. Wherefore glorify ye the Lord in the fires. You see that? Glorify the Lord in the fires while the flames are up, while the fire is burning, while the problem is there. Don't grumble. Don't complain. Don't murmur. Don't look at everything around you. The problem, the pain, the persecution, the suffering, the sorrow, and the reproach of the enemy. And start asking foolish questions. Oh Lord, where are you? It's still there. 
is where he was before he created the world. He's still there where he was when he put Adam in the garden. He's still there where he was when Pharaoh said, who is that God? He's still there. The same place it was when Nebuchadnezzar said, if I decide to throw you in the fire, who is that God? Where is that God that will deliver you out of man? God is still where he was. He's still there where he was when Christ was crucified. He is still there where he was when Christ was buried. He's still there the same place he was when he rose from the dead. Don't ever ask a foolish question. Yeah, because of that little pressure, that little pain, that little problem, and that little kind of adversity against your life. Oh God, where are you? He's still there. It is when you're praising the Lord in the fire. And you're glorifying the Lord in the fire. And you're singing praises to the Lord in the fire. That miracle will come. I said that miracle will come. If you'll change your attitude today and you'll say, I'll never allow that suffering to get into my heart and disturb my praise. I'll never allow that problem to get into my emotion and disturb my praising the Lord. I will never allow what I see to hinder me in praising the Lord. In the fire, in the fire, in the fire, in the flame, in the flood, I'll keep on praising the name of the Lord. Wherefore, glorify ye the Lord in the fires, even the name of the Lord God of Israel in the isles of the sea. It is when we do that, something is going to happen. The supernatural is going to happen. Verse 23, then after that, praising the Lord, glorifying the Lord, pleasing the Lord, walking in the way of the Lord, not backsliding because of a little problem, a little challenge, not backsliding because of the fire, not backsliding because of the pain, not backsliding because of the suffering, then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancients gloriously. Glorious things are going to happen. I said glorious things are going to happen. In Psalm 50, Psalm 50, verse 23. Psalm 50, verse 23. Psalm 50, verse 23. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. Offering praise glorifying the Lord. And to him that ordereth his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. We're coming to Second Chronicles chapter 20, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. There was a great, great problem confronting Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat said, here we are, Lord. We are at a crossroad. What are we going to do? We don't know what we are going to do because this is a problem that goes beyond our wisdom. It's a kind of problem that goes beyond our readiness, there's no power within us. Look at verse 6 in Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 6, and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are thou not God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen in thine hand? Is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Art not thou a God? who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gave a seed to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever, and he dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us, and a sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence for thy name is in this house and cry unto thee in our affliction in our affliction in the fire in the pain in the suffering in the reproach in our affliction then thou wilt hear and hell and then it says as it goes on, what are we going to do? We do not know what we are going to do, but our eyes are upon you. In verse, in verse, in verse 12, O our God, 
wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. We are at a crossroad, but our eyes are upon thee. It was in that state of confusion, that state of sorrow, that state of problem, that state of problem, pain and perdition, that a prophet came, the man of God, and said, you don't have anything to do about this. There's no, there's no fight for you at all. And then Jehoshaphat believed that in verse 20, and, it, and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoan. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, hear me, O Judah. The problems were still there. The confederacies of those enemies were still there. And they were still brandishing their ammunitions and their weapons of war. And they were still threatening and bragging, we're going to destroy Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah. And then the king said, hear me, O Judah. And ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God. I believe in the Lord our God. I said, I believe in the Lord our God. And then he says, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets and so shall ye prosper. You will prosper. Yeah. I said you will prosper. Yeah. And when he had consulted, when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord and that they should praise what? Praise what? Praise what? Not belittle the beauty of holiness. Not jest about holiness. Not joke about holiness. Not trample on holiness. Praise the beauty of holiness. That's where the victory is. That is where our miracle lies. When with all one heart, in all sincerity, we say God is holy. And we rejoice because we're children of a holy God. And he raised up those singers that it should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army to say, Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing, and to praise the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, which were against Judah, and they were smitten. And they were smitten. And they were smitten. And the children of Ammon and of Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone held to destroy another. The enemies will destroy themselves. I said the enemies will destroy themselves. The sickness will go out by itself. The oppression will go out by itself. And all those adversities will go out by themselves. While the walls are still standing, praise the Lord. While the pain is still there, praise the Lord. While it is in the midnight of problem, praise the Lord. And while the difficulties and the challenges are there, praise the Lord. And while the difficulties, while the sickness, while the affliction, and while those things are bringing great pressure upon your life, you are praising the Lord. How many of you will praise the Lord in the fire? Yes, in the flame. Yes, in the difficulty. Why don't you rise up and say, it is time praising the Lord. It is time praising the Lord. Not murmuring, not grumbling, and not complaining. It is time praising the Lord. Praising the Lord. Praising the Lord. In the difficulty, praise the Lord. In the challenges, praise the Lord. Whatever is happening, whatever is not happening, praise the Lord. And praise the beauty of his holiness the beauty of his holiness that's enough to praise him for 
that his soul in spite of Pharaoh is go to praise him for that. His faithful in spite of Nebuchadnezzar, go to praise him for that. His righteous, pure, and holy. In spite of the enemy, in spite of the sickness, in spite of the challenges, in spite of the difficulties, praise, praise, praise the Lord. And praise the beauty of holiness. That's the proper perception. Praising the Lord. That's the proper perception. Praising the Lord. Praising the beauty of holiness. In the midnight. In the difficulty. Glorifying the Lord in the fire. Praise the Lord. Don't look at what you see, just praise the Lord. Don't look at the challenges, just praise the Lord. Out of a cleansed heart, out of a sincere heart, out of a willing heart, out of an appreciative heart, praising the Lord. When you see the problems, praise the Lord. When you see the enemy, praise the Lord. When Pharaoh is running after you, praise the Lord. When you see the army of Sisera, praise the Lord. When the fire is burning, praise the Lord. When your feet are in the stalks, praise the Lord. When you feel like a eunuch that doesn't count in life, praise the Lord. Praising the Lord, praising the Lord, praising the Lord all the time for His goodness, for His mercy, for His ability. For the great possibilities. Praise the Lord. Praise Him. It's good to praise the Lord. Good to praise the Lord. Good to praise the Lord. Before you see what you want to see, praise the Lord. Before you feel the victory, praise the Lord. Before you see the Jericho walls fall, praise the Lord. Before the job comes, praise the Lord. Before the answer arrives, praise the Lord. Before you get the husband, before you get the wife, praise the Lord. Before the miracle children arrive, praise the Lord. While the poverty is still there, while the pressure is still there, while the defeat seems to be there, Praise the Lord. Before you see the fulfillment of the promises, just praise in the Lord. That's how to praise the Lord. That's how to praise the Lord. That is how to praise the Lord. Hearts of praise. Mind of praise. Life of praising the Lord in the fire, in the flame, in the flood, in the fury of the enemy, before the furnace of Nebuchadnezzar, praising the Lord, praising the Lord, praising the Lord always, rejoicing at all times, glorifying the Lord at all times. 
not looking at things which are seen but looking at the things which are not seen praising the lord and praising the lord and praising the lord praise him praise him praise him never ask a question again god where are you still there king of kings and lord of lords he ruleth over all he is there he is there he is there praise him for that praise him for that praise him for that still there still there still there he has not shifted position he has not changed position keep on praising the lord the foundation of your prison will shake and all the doors and all the windows of that prison will be opened your bands will be loosed your life will be turned around praising him praising him praising him praising him praising him praising him all the day long praising the lord with all your heart with all your mind with all your strength with all the ability of communication within you praising the lord before the things change just praise the lord the midst of the difficulty and the danger just praising the lord Praise him. Praise him. Don't look at what you see. Praise him. Don't look at how you feel. Praise him. Don't look at the problem. Praise him. Don't look at the enemies. Praise him. Don't look at the mountain, praise him. Don't listen to the words of those persecutors, praise him. And praise him all the day long. That's how the Jericho walls will fall. That's how the sicknesses will move. That's how poverty will turn to prosperity. That's how bondage will turn to breakthrough. That's how the enemy will fall down at your feet and wash him. Praise the Lord. That's how joy unspeakable. Peace that passes understanding will reach your life. Just praising the Lord, praising the Lord, praising the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let your hallelujah break down those walls of Jericho. Praise the Lord. Let your hallelujah put the enemy on the run. Praise the Lord. 
the Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more forever in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. This fire that is burning, this moment will be put off. Fire in your body. Fire in your family. Fire in your place of work. Fire in the village. Fire in the community. Praise the Lord. I have got the miracle. I have got the miracle. I have got the miracle. That's right, that's right, that's right. Clap before you see it. Clap before you see it. Rejoice before you see it. Praise the Lord before you see it. Make a wonderful shout of praise to the Lord before you see it. It has come. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. The praise of the Lord is a mouth wash. Your mouth smells when you murmur. Smells and stinks when you grumble. But the praise of the Lord is a mouth wash. And then it washes away all the stinking. And then all through the day, the mouth wash is still there. I'm praising the Lord. I'm praising the Lord. I'm praising the Lord all throughout the day. Remember, every time your mama makes your mouth to stink before the Lord. But the praise of the mouth wash, and now that your mouth is washed, and now you're smelling good. Now you're smelling good. I said, now you're smelling good. Now the Lord is going to answer the prayer in Jesus' name. Raise up those hands to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because the mountains have gone already. The Jericho walls are falling down already. Thank you, Lord, because the sickness is gone already. Thank you, Lord, because the affliction is gone already. Lord, we claim it. Lord, we rejoice in it. It is done in Jesus' name. Every fire that burns in your family, I put it off right now in Jesus' name. All the Jericho walls in your life hindering you to get to the land of promise. I break everything down right now. Jericho walls, I command you before the people of God, fall in Jesus' name. All the mental problem, insanity, I command right now on that woman, on that man, on that boy, that girl, come out in Jesus' name. Every incurable disease in your body, in your wife, in your husband, in your child, in your daddy, in your mommy, I command that incurable disease come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray every impossibility will become possible. Those who are jobless, now you can praise the Lord. Go back home and get the job in Jesus' name. Those are failure plaguing their lives. All that failure, I command you. Get out in Jesus' name. Sorrow, suffering, tears, heartache. Come out in Jesus' name. Enemies, Egyptians, Syrians, Babylonians, Herodians. I command you, enemies of the people of God, come out in Jesus' name. This is a day of God's power in your life. Your mountains are rolled away. Your sicknesses are gone. The glory of the Lord is upon you right now. The enemies will destroy themselves. You will shine. You will arise. 
you'll be lifted up. You'll be the head and not the tail. The first and not the last. The joy of the Lord will be the strength of your life. On and on to victory in your life in Jesus' name. You will see. Miracle in your life. You will see. Healing in your body. You will see. Everything you have ever desired in Jesus' name. You not that have no count. Now you will be worthy your count for somebody. Something to be counted will come in your body. Children to be counted will come in your family. Blessings to be counted will come in your business. And good things to be counted will come in your life. And I pronounce the blessing of the Lord upon everyone. You will count for something significant in life. Lord, we thank you. We magnify your name because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said...